This is gonna be good. Cut the whole episode up till this point. Police Navidad. Police Navidad. Constantly urinating. Oh, yeah. He's just. Police Navidad. He never stops. Something, something. And Felicidad. Something, something. Moving the cat hands together. Bear friend TV. I was in the supermarket the other day and, like, there's so many kinds, so many varieties of eggnog currently. But the eggnog is right next to like the almond milk and soy milk and coconut milk. And mm-hmm. there's no almond milk eggnog or coconut milk eggnog. And that, that kind of surprises me. Because that's for free. I know, I mean, right? That surprises me. Like Actually, there should, that there sounds should, cool. There should be festive <clears throat> almond nog. Um, Chris, maybe you should make some. Yeah. Maybe I will. Probably not that hard. I just I feel like the the consumer society that we're in right now, I expect everything to be flavored like everything else and also made out of everything. Could you use duck eggs, I wonder? To make eggnog? Yeah. I'm all about duck eggs these days. Duck eggs these days. I'm all about duck eggs. Duck eggs these days. Well the jingle bells are jingling. The streets are white with snow Happy crowds are mingling Ah, but there's no place left to go Well, I'm sure that you'll forgive me If I don't enthuse Oh, I guess I got them Christmas Yeah, you got them Christmas I've done my window. You kind of trailed off there. I, I'm all about I don't know what I was supposed to say. Miss, uh, but what's the urinating stop when there's no one on your list? That's goddamn I right. You know the way I'm feeling when you love and then you lose. Oh, I guess I got the Christmas. I guess I got them Christmas blues. You're listening to Bear Friend Tea Party, a podcast about cats, cat urine, and how to get the smell of cat urine out of my house. Seriously, how do I get the smell of cat urine out of my house? My name is Christopher Winter. I'm joined on the podcast tonight by cat whisperer Jeremy Mullis of North Carolina. Bear friend tea party. And cat wrangler Dr. Jonathan Bumpers. Good evening. Large animal veterinarian D. Gunnard Beamish could not be here tonight. Ser- seriously, it, in all seriousness, how do I get the smell of cat urine out of my home? Well, you probably need to get your cat to stop urinating in, in your in it. Well, we've got a great show for you tonight. Um, segment one tonight, is mistletoe bullshit? Oh, I have to prepare that real quick. <laughs> segment two, classic hip-hop singles. Positive K's I Got a Man, 1992. And segment four... 46 euphemisms for breasts, ranked from most to least appealing on a very special Christmas episode of Bear Friend Tea Party. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Yeah. But before we get into that fucking shit, um, why don't we do listener email corrections and or... Uh, in response to episode 00026, the 1955 where everybody has green dicks, $100 worth free pudding wrote, nice building, bad roof, good parking. It's even, even better than when we read it last episode. <laughs> Oh, did we? we? Yeah, but I like it. I think we should just keep reading that one until we get some new chorus. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. 
No, listener, one hundred dollars worth of free pudding <laughs> really makes a compelling argument. Um, all right, no, uh, they, stop. Let's stop these noises. All right. I agree. Yeah, I think my nine volt battery is about to die anyway. <laughs> is that why it was getting kind of fuzzy? <laughs> oh no, no, that that was intentional. I turned on the fuzz. Uh, does anyone want to continue on with this episode, or do you think we've pretty much nailed Should we start it? Start over. I mean, it's been excellent so far. Okay. I don't know what you're. Right. Um, <clears throat> no, no, I don't no. Know what, what it's you're hard implying. to fill all this airtime with, 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 with. If there's no additional listener correspondence, and if no one has any corrections, I, I don't. I guess we'll move on to the addenda, of which I believe we have two. First off, we'll go in. We'll go in chronological order, <laughs> by order that the episodes were recorded, if not released. <laughs> <laughs> so in episode zero 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 two six, uh, the nineteen fifty five where everybody has green dicks, um, classic our, episode. We we had a discussion of the AI revolution, and um, we were but we were pl- trying to play it straight. So I mm-hmm. I didn't go down this route, and I was gonna make the joke that you know if you want to make an artificial brain, all you have to do is, like, boil a bunch of macaroni and, like, overcook it and then, like, you know, put it in a bowl and cool it down and then, like, it'll feel just like brains. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you have to close your eyes. So that was a joke I was thinking of making. Not a good joke. And that's only the jumping-off point for this addendum. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, the addendum is... is okay. <laughs> it's, it's, the addendum is to a it's joke to a that joke you, you didn't make, make got it, got it, got it. but yes, could have. Yes. Okay, so that was the joke I was going to make. Not very funny, but this was a reference to the uh, Halloween game. I did some research. This game is generally called either like Dr. Frankenstein's Monster or Dr. Feelenstein, and the premise oh. is that you're all blindfolded, and they pass right. around these these relatively innocuous food items, but then, like, in the context of, like, you're told this is brains, and then it's supposed to feel kind of creepy and, like, brain-like. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. I thought to myself, uh-huh. number one, do people actually play this game? Because I've heard about it. It was on Classic. The Simpsons Classic. one time. I, yes, I, but... I'm glad you referenced that Simpsons episode. Um, I, I have played yep. that game. It was it it was uh, it was at a elementary school haunted house event. Really? Yes. Was it, and was it creepy? I mean... Okay, well, this is... I'm going to... So I, let I, me... I guess. I don't know. Do you remember what they used for brains? Because I was very curious. Is there like a standard set of things... That people use, like... I, I believe it, there it, may be several competing standards. Yeah. You know, but depending so it, on whether you're in Europe or the U.S., you know. Yeah. It's like like a PAL versus NTS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, one of the only references to this game I could find on the internet, and I'm sure there's others, but it's hard to know what to Google. One of the few I found was on the top 10 blogcom Top 10 Party Games for Halloween. And mm-hmm. uh, this one, they, this is top ten party game number five. Wow, um, crack the top five. Or the bottom five. It, I don't remember which way the list went. But oh. they called this game Dr. Feelenstein. And, uh, He's the one that makes you feel... Einstein. Cut, cut that out. They call this uh-huh. game Dr. Feelenstein. And right. it was, so this is interesting. Here's the food items they recommend. Okay, mm-hmm. so number one, first... Right. You do. You pass around. Uh, you say, "Here are his eyes, still uh-huh. frozen." Oh, I know. I know. Can, I guess? can we guess? No. no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, like, can we guess? No. Just let me do it's, the fucking it's thing. Of, it's no, fun it's not okay. fun. Just let me do the <laughs> <laughs> fucking thing. All right. I know what it is. Okay. Right. What is it, John? No. I. You said we couldn't guess. No. Yeah. Go you ahead. said we couldn't guess. No. We're not guess. allowed to guess. It's grapes, right? It's peeled grapes. Peeled no, grapes. I was no. going to guess peeled grapes. Yeah. Peeled yeah. grapes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're both you're both wrong. Like I said, Sorry. there are several competing standards. I know that. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you something amusing about some research I did. Jeremy, this is not the amuse bouche section. This is the addenda section. Okay, let him finish. Because, like, okay. John, I mean, you and I are kind of sophisticated and European, so we would use field field <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Okay, go ahead. Go on, go on. I'm muting After myself. After I'm done, 
Look, after I'm done... No, don't mute yourself. <laughs> Just be polite. <laughs> See, there's no Impossible. middle ground. Is there no middle ground between, like, <laughs> constant interruption and <laughs> complete silence? So, here's how they say to play the game, Dr. Feelenstein. So, you start out, you say, Here are his eyes, still frozen with surprise. And then they recommend that you pass around two large frozen olives. Oh. I guess because, oh. like, if they have the pimento, kind of, it's like, little eye. What does it say? Does it say pimento olives? Or? It doesn't matter. Yeah, but, what kind whoa, of olives? But, but, so the but, next... But, 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 but you... No, no, okay, just let him, just okay, let him okay, say it. Just let really, him... We'll come back to the is, olives. We'll circle around right, back okay, to the like, olives. This is going to be another of those ones with the, like, <laughs> 20 minutes of buildup for a very disappointing... <laughs> All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. We'll circle not... back to the olive. Ol- ol- so, okay, eyes frozen with the pr- surprise. Eyes, they're olives. Very reasonable. Here right. is his brain, which now feels no pain. And they recommend to use <laughs> a large head of wet parboiled cauliflower. What? Yeah. I like it, brain-shaped. Yeah. Like it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Here's where it gets yeah. interesting. Here is his heart. Take care, lest it start. <laughs> and uh, and they recommend they recommend a large lump of raw liver. Okay. What do they do? I know, for right? Liver? Because wait, like, wait, wait, yeah, liver. right. Wait, like, wait. Like the whole point is that these are not organs. Why not, right. Why right? not just why? say? Why not just say? Here is his liver. Be careful lest it quiver. I know. It's <laughs> I know. a liver. It's or, a real liver. I know. It may. It, yeah. It, it maybe makes no maybe sense. the compilers of this list are not aware that liver that you. Eat I don't is, think a liver is like even shaped anything cut. like a heart. No, I mean it's not even. It doesn't. That's true. It doesn't feel like a heart. And it's already a liver, which is gross. <laughs> and the whole point is that the things feel gross, and then they're not. It's it's so weird. And then but and then it goes back to normal. Um, feel these drops of blood. Like drops of blood is a uh, cold tomato soup. You do a no, hand, which is a damp plastic glove filled with ice or jelly. Okay. An yeah. ear. You use a dried apricot. This is the only other one that's weird. For his nose, they recommend a pickle. A hot dog, or the Parsons nose of a chicken. The, what? The what? What? Is the that Parsons? like the the comb? The waddle or the doodle? Yeah, the waddle. Maybe it's the waddle. <laughs> the the pummel, doodle. Not the Did you say doodle? The yeah, it's called a doodle, isn't it? It's not called a doodle. The, the doodle thing, is the, the chicken's thing... penis. Doodle, no. John Doodle is a euphemism for penis. No, no, no. That's that's a, a sausage. Chicken don't even have penises. It's They're the ladies. chickens. It's a chicken's. Uh, it's like the tail, basically. That little like nub of a tail. So it's also gross. You. So now I'd like to open the discussion up to everyone. Um, thank you for <laughs> thank you for listening. I, I'm not, I don't think I have I, anything else to say. <laughs> I have several things to say. Okay, to say, okay, to say. okay. <laughs> Cut everything out until he and John. I believe you had a. Uh, you also had an addendum. Yes, I have an addendum to episode zero 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 three nine, the age of complex sandwiches. <laughs> Uh, during our segment, <laughs> classic on, uh, episode. Our our segment on the McDLT, which was which was uh, the first in in a series of segments on classic ill fated fast food ventures. <laughs> we referenced the uh, Jerry Butler and Aretha Franklin <laughs> commercial <laughs> for the McDLT. Uh, we just we touched on it very briefly, and I was thinking about it the other day. And I realized uh, that, okay, so the premise of the commercial is that <laughs> there, there is a uh, Academy Award style, you know, award show going on. Right. And Aretha right. Franklin and Jerry Butler are, are, are on stage to present the award for the mm-hmm. best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger. <laughs> That's, yep. Right. Okay. Something that would happen. <clears throat> and the announcer says, is at the very beginning the announcer and 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 
I had to slow down the tape to, to hear it because I, 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 it just blew right by me before. But the announcer says, uh, and now to announce the winner of the uh, whatever Best Tasting Lettuce and Tomato Hamburger Award, um, please give a round of applause to um, Sizzler Aretha Franklin and the Iceman Jerry Butler. Oh. Which I didn't think anything of that at the time because I, uh, apparently the Iceman is his nickname and I, don't know, I guess Aretha Franklin is considered a Sizzler. But anyway, yeah. it's a metaphor for the the sandwich because it's hot and it's hot and cold. Oh, it explains why why the, the joke of those two stars being on stage. Yeah, I don't, those but two particular stars. It it seemed like kind of a stretch to me because okay, Jerry Butler is the Ice Man. I don't remember ever hearing anyone call Aretha Franklin Sizzler. It seemed like they had kind of made that like they no, got the Jerry but, Butler and then they were yeah. like. Can anybody think of a celebrity who's named, you know, Hots, or they call Sizzlin, and they're like, no, and, well, can we get Aretha yeah. Franklin and just call her a Sizzler? They should have gotten um, Vanilla Ice and the, and the <laughs> yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Thank well, that's, you. that's yeah. what, Thank you. that's, I mean, yeah, if it had been, yeah, they really could have done that. It was, like, early 90s, wasn't it? When the No, no, no. It was 80, 85 or 86, I believe. But, yeah. But yeah. I think everyone would have been like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> our, our HCP were around then, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I thought, that, I thought that was at least, I don't know, marginally interesting. Sting, 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 sting. Segment one is mistletoe bullshit. Uh, look, so this is my segment, and I don't think we need to drag it out. I don't have a lot to say, but I was just thinking about this recently because the Christmas season is upon us. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. And mistletoe, when I think about it, that's really messed up, isn't it? Like that it's, you just hang it in the house somewhere and then if anyone's under it, you've got to kiss them. It seems like the sleaziest Christmas tradition. Okay, well, so is the question, is mistletoe bullshit or is mistletoe a sexual harassment suit waiting to happen? More the latter. I mean, but anything that is a sexual harassment suit waiting to happen is probably bullshit. Yeah, I would not hang one up in a place of work. Or in a church. Yeah, I mean, then, well, that's weird. That would be weird. Um, or, or in a graveyard, because then you might have to kiss a dead person. But, I, you know, you don't have yeah, to kiss a someone. A morgue. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't hang mistletoe up in a morgue. That's just asking for trouble. That's, that's, <laughs> that's just, just common sense. <laughs> or like, like uh, you know, in in the lion enclosure at a zoo. <laughs> that, would, that would be extremely dangerous. <laughs> that would be... Well, you, you, I think... I'm, I'm wondering if you... I'm wondering if you have maybe taken the mistletoe rules a little too seriously... Uh, maybe. What are the? I mean, like you don't okay. My un, my understanding. Okay, how, my understanding. The rules are, are not really that well fleshed out. I feel like. my understanding. Let me. I'll give you my understanding of the mistletoe rules, and you tell me if I'm in error. All right. My understanding Can't is, wait. if someone is standing underneath the mistletoe, everyone has to kiss that person until that person is no longer under the mistletoe. That's not so. What if you, the, that's just not, everyone who's in the room, everyone who can see that person has to just continually kiss them until they remove themselves from the mistletoe. Is that not how that works? I think that would be better. Chris, I, 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 think, mean, I, I think I figured out why uh, <laughs> you've had such an awkward... And, uh, and if you put like... If you put like a blender or a Cuisinart or something under the mistletoe, a, a, a running Cuisinart, it's extremely dangerous. You wouldn't be able to kiss the blade anyway. You'd have to take the top off. It's and there's mm-hmm. the safe mm-hmm. the safety mechanism. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, unless it's been deactivated for for exactly this hypothetical situation. Chris, do you, I'm wondering, do, do you think that the practice 
the ritual behind or, or associated with mistletoe is bullshit or mis- the mistletoe itself it, it, is that bullshit because it's just a it's just a plant right yeah i guess i don't have anything against mistletoe as a plant i guess you're you're correct it's it, the the segment could more accurately have been named are the human practices related to mistletoe bullshit? <laughs> I'm going to say no. Okay. Can you elaborate on that? Or I just, I've really never heard of anyone being inappropriately fondled under the mistletoe or like. No, I mean, mistletoe is a fondling ab- plant. Unwanted advances. I think it happens in movies, but it's generally like a comedic beat. It's a comedic beat that in real life would be harassment. Just to clarify, like, you don't fondle people under the mistletoe. That's a completely separate plan. No, you're supposed to grab their butt, too, right? That you fondle people under. My impression is that the mistletoe is supposed to serve the purpose of giving, like, kind of, uh, giving people who want to kiss an excuse to kiss. Oh. Yeah. Segment two. Segment two. Uh, segment two. Uh, wait, what was our conclusion? Not bullshit. Oh, can I? Can I wait? Well, we're, well, we're still on. Mi- well, we're still on mistletoe. Can I just segment ask? Two. This? Segment two. Segment two. Um, classic hip hop singles. <laughs> Positive K's. I got a man from 1992. Um, so ever since we've been doing these classic hip hop album segments, um, people have been writing in and saying, w- "When are you gonna?" Talk about the album by Positive K that had the song "I Got a Man" on it, <laughs> and you know, which, I'm always which was like, what album again? Uh, I'm I'm always like, well, what you know, what else is there really to say about the album by Positive K that had <laughs> <laughs> that had the single "I Got a Man" on it? Um, so. <laughs> Actually, I looked into, I listened to some of that album, and it it was pretty disappointing. I don't, I honestly don't remember what it was called, and I don't care. The skills that pay the bills did uh, something. That's it. The skills debt paid the bills. I told you I don't care. (laughs) Anyway, this was a hit single from uh, 1992. This is a hip-hop single with a a nice beat, and it features the rapper Positive K, who is best known for the single, I Got a Man, which is (laughs) the subject of this segment. Um, Mm -hmm. Way to to tie it it back around. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I thought we were. Full I thought we were getting off. I thought we were getting off topic there for a second, but you the, you the, you brought it right back. Right back. anyway, th- this this single is a tight. It's like a tight four minutes. Um, the premise is like there's a dialogue between Positive K and one to three women on whom he is <laughs> macking, um, and trying to uh, like convince them to. There's a fourth be, one in the end. Be a sexual partner of his. Um, and uh, they go back and forth. She always comes back to the fact that she has a man. Right. And um, yeah. Vince, you know, Vince goes the sun. And I think most people like the hook, which is like, like, I got a man. Uh, What's your man got to do with me? What's your man got to do with me? I ain't trying I got to hear that. I got a man. I trying to hear that. Something. Yeah, something, I ain't trying to hear something. that. See. And yeah. the music video, um, I quite like. But uh, but look, I, I decided rather than me just going on forever, I'm going to mm-hmm. do this kind of more McDLT style. And I have prepared nice. a few discussion questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, number one. DLT style. <laughs> Yeah, I like discussion question number one. Um, how great is this song? Pretty great, right? I say it's yeah. moderately great. I, I mean, I okay. I have to admit, I I think the the beat is pretty great. Yeah, and it's got a it's got a funny hook. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sort of a novelty song. I am personally, I'm kind of soured on this song. Because in the early 90s, I was a high school student, and an irritating guy at my high school, whose name was Connor, 
was constantly trying to joke with me and he'd like, hey Chris, what's your man got to do with me? And he wanted me to sing along and be like, I got a man, and I did not want to do it. And I've been soured on this song. I mean, he was letting you have the good part. That's true. Yeah, he was letting me be the one to say, I got a man. Uh, <laughs> okay, but you, but listening back to it, you see the appeal. I definitely objectively, yeah, it's a, it, it's a fun novelty song. In your life, it's played out. Yeah, I would say is it, kind of your perspective. Whereas to me, this was this was kind of new. I I think I was younger at the time, so I kind of missed this when it was like everywhere. So it sounded were... like kind of familiar to me. I know I'd heard it a few times, but I wasn't like. My presumption is that you were twelve. Yeah, I would have been probably assuming a, assuming time flows. Time, yeah, in a, time. I'm trying to remember when it was that I was um, on that that kind of generational starship traveling at near the speed of light, and I think that was in the seventies. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so that wouldn't have affected this. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Jeremy, just just I'm just to clarify, it, it traveled near the speed of light. Well, obviously. Yes. Not at the speed of light. I think that's what I said. I thought you said at. I believe but. I believe if you listen back to this episode. All right, everybody stop said. recording so we can listen back. <laughs> so John, John, what are, I mean, what are your thoughts? Did you like this you you, you enjoyed listening I, to this song and watching the music video? Song? Yeah, I, I, I my first time through, I thought like, wow, what a really dated um, piece of sexist trash. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. but yeah, yeah. I definitely warmed up to it. Um, yeah. I actually think it's a pretty kicking track and it's not <laughs> like it's got a nice hook, and it's got a yeah. nice back and forth banter between yeah. the two plus characters. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I was confused. I, I thought they were all the same woman in different clothes at first. But yeah, it seemed like yeah, that. For it did a while. seem like that. But then they're all in the same place. Or uh, yeah, if you listen to the if you listen to the preamble, the preamble is exactly the same as the preamble in um, "I'm Not Having It," which is the prior song yeah it, it's kind of a sequel to um and, and it's just a bunch of dudes at a social gathering uh saying like hey look at those hot chicks um <laughs> does one of us have the gumption to go and p- propose to one of them you know and and and, and, and positive k is like I do, and then he—that's what the song is. But yeah, but they are—they are basically. I wasn't going to get into this later, but we've brought it up. So yeah, the, it's kind of shocking when you realize that this song, which came out in '92, was preceded by another song that is virtually identical in premise. Excuse me, miss. No, I'm not having But I would say that I got a man is much more catchy. It's much more catchy, and and like. It, so the title, the both songs are titled after the woman's response, which is kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the woman goes from having just a sort of a generic, you like, me, I'm not having it response to, to like a specific me, rebuttal. It's like, no, I'm not having it because I got a man. You know. So the woman's mm. voice becomes stronger, which is ironic because the woman's voice is sung by Positive K in the second song. I mean, you're you're jumping jumping the uh, ahead a little. So let's let's I'm move sorry, on I'm to sorry. my th- no. Let's move. That's a really good point, <laughs> and let's move on to my discussion question three. Um, <laughs> is the song "I Got a Man" by Positive K a feminist song, a chauvinist song, or neither? <laughs> neither. But John, you were you were speaking to the some interesting things about the woman's voice. Just to just to just to just to back up a bit, MC Light in the in the nineteen eighty nine track, which was sorry, sorry, what was yes. it called? I'm not having it. I'm not I'm not having it. Um, MC Light. It, it's a it's a duet rap between MC Light and Positive K. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was interesting. I mean, particularly if you're looking at this uh, uh, from the perspective of a feminist critique, it's interesting mm-hmm. that in the I Got a Man single, um, mm-hmm. the female voice is actually positive K, but pitch shifted up a few steps. Yeah. And like I, talking mm-hmm. in like a, a yeah. girl voice, I guess. I think it's interesting. I think it's, you know, like it seems like the female character may be stronger in the, in the sequel. Than they, than in the hmm. in the original song, um, which is 
it, it, it's sort of under undermined by the fact that it's not actually performed by a woman. I don't know if I agree that mm. the female character is stronger in I Got a Man as opposed to in I Ain't Having It. Because in I'm Not Having It, she may not have a man. She may not need a man. Yeah. She's just not having yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's in, a good point. That's a, a good point. That's, it's like maybe yeah. she doesn't need a reason. So, I mean, the thing that I, I do think it is a song with an interesting kind of... On the one hand, you've got some pretty strong female figures. Yeah. They're not taking in, any shit I got from a, Positive that's, K. Yeah. Exactly. And Positive K, Positive yeah. K, to his credit, although he is, to some extent, objectifying these ladies... Yeah. Um, he doesn't he win. Is, he doesn't win, and he's not. he doesn't act really entitled. Yeah. He makes his case. He says, look, here's That's what true. I can do for you. I can, I can satisfy you when your man can't, you know? I can, I'll write mm-hmm. you love letters, and she's like, well, my man is going to do that, but if you, mean If it. you will, I'm Big or Daddy Longstroke, and your man's Pee Wee Herman. Ex- for yeah, instance, that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's, which, is a, very, which is a very persuasive, that's a very persuasive argument. Ah, it seems like a bunch of soup to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, and we said this, I think, John, we've said this previously about the uh, Ghetto Boys song, I'm Not a Gentleman, and also the Punk Bitch game um it's not a feminist anthem this is not i am woman hear me roar certainly but i i read it as pretty mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. playful i don't ever feel like these women are threatened by positive k certainly not at the same time though <laughs> the female voice in i got a man is positive k so in another sense he has literally stolen their <laughs> voice yeah but as i said i believe that's a red herring because the, like that wasn't an, that wasn't an artistic choice. That was a oh really? That was uh, yeah. It was legal bullshit behind the scenes with between the labels. If I may piggyback on your on your uh, statement about feminism, yeah, um, there are many different stripes of feminism. Yeah, which which wave of feminism are you asking yeah. if this is, Jeremy? Mm-hmm. Like it's clearly not first wave feminism. Oh, clearly not. Yeah, I mean it's I mean, there's very little about the the right to vote. In I it. would say it is. Fe- I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue that it's a feminist anthem, but I yeah. would say that it is. It reflects some of the values of feminism, and that's specifically just the the notion of equality. You know, it has nothing to do with with you know women like taking over and eating everybody's penises or whatever. It's just, but it, like the two characters are are they're bantering back and forth. You could say the woman actually gets the better because she doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, she doesn't submit to him. But I don't know. I I, I I consider them to be equally strong characters. Yeah. Um. At the same time, I think that that assessment is a little bit undermined by the music video. I agree. I think I know where you're going, but continue. because in the video, after all the lyric, after all, all the words are done. Um, Positive K uh, abandons the three women that he's been attempting to woo over the course of the song, and he goes and grabs some floozy, and yeah. and st- starts leading her up the stairs like he's going to go, you know, have her have his way with her. But you know, maybe that's what she wants. It's not like yeah. he doesn't he doesn't announce this. It just happens in the video. I mean, it is interesting that the woman that Positive K eventually presumably scores with mm-hmm. is a woman. With no voice. True, but... <laughs> I, I yeah. almost feel like if you just listen to the audio, mm-hmm. I feel like... It's a stronger... Hey, uh, it's a pretty, like, you know... Yeah, it's pretty progressive in yeah. its politics. And if you watch the Especially video... Especially for 1992. Like li- yeah. yeah. If you watch the video, it's a little more like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. There's a lot going on there. There's um, so much going on. There's so much... And we've barely scratched the surface. Can I circle back to something? Because my computer froze. You were asking about... You know, you were mentioning, oh, okay, it's actually Positive K doing the vocals. And so he's like, from one perspective, he has literally stolen the woman's voice. I think that's true. Yeah, exactly. And yet, yes. from another perspective, what's happening is he's putting himself... Inside mm. the experience mm. Inside her skin. of a woman who's being uh, hit on, you know, and who's not welcoming that. And yeah. so it, it's interesting because it's sort of two sided. Like he's inside it as well. Yeah. And in a way, yeah. you, the listener, are experiencing that also. And, and yeah. so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's totally kind of it's, it's weirdly bivalent in that way. 
It yeah, is weird. I mean, I, it's weirdly you. bivalent. It's weirdly <laughs> bivalent. It's totally bivalent. Like like many <laughs> things that we discuss on this podcast. Let, yeah, let's let's get let's back to it. Does it bring it around on the topic of <laughs> feminism? Um, I think it, I think initially the song seems very sexist from you know our, our vantage point up up here in the relatively high supposedly moral peak of 2015. I'm in the basement. Oh, it's it's a metaphor. It's oh, not geographical. Um, but I think in actuality, I, <laughs> I think you know, it's I think our our notions of of what is sexist and what is not, um, really maybe uh, shit. It's a great song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So discussion question right. two. In the song I Got a Man by Positive K, <laughs> what is meant by the term, I ain't trying to hear that, see? Oh, I, okay. I had thoughts about this. Because that is an interesting turn of phrase. Yes. And I always, I had always, uh, when the song came out, I had always heard that as, I ain't trying to hit, like I'm not trying to hit on oh. you. Which seemed weird because he was obviously oh. trying to hit on yeah. her. Yeah, right. Because yeah. it's obviously. The, but it seemed uh, like something that maybe he would be saying, like, "Hey, I'm not trying to no. hit on you. Just like, let's no. go have yes. sex." I would say, to Positive K's credit, he's very he's very upfront about trying to hit on her. Yeah, yeah. You know, it mm-hmm. sounds, if I may, it sounds like when he says, "I'm not trying to hear that." See, yeah, it sounds like yeah. what he really means, whether he realizes it or not, is, "I'm trying not to hear that," mm. which is different. Because mm. obviously he must be making an effort not to hear it because he's ignoring it and he's just like he's telling her he's ignoring it and he's like I'm gonna yeah. pursue you anyway. Here's what I think about and this is this is what I wanted to say <laughs> about the feminism thing. I think the character of Positive K in the song I think is a chauvinist asshole. Hmm. I think hmm. Positive K himself. In reality, I think I think he's a more nuanced figure. You think he's slightly lampooning the character that Absolutely. he's portraying? Absolutely, because and the evidence that I would provide for that is the fact that uh, MC or whatever the girl character, the girl, the girl, the unnamed girl, MC McLean, <laughs> MC Arch Deluxe. <laughs> um, I don't think it's MC DLT. <laughs> so the basic structure of the song is positive k makes an an advance on on this Uh woman or maybe there's three women i don't know it's not totally clear in the in the in the song it sounds like i would believe it was one woman and in the video it's Mm -hmm. three okay Uh, okay yeah i i I agree with that um and and my position is that both are equally true Oh yeah, well it's it's definitely bivalent it's a, from that perspective. It's, it's just like it's just like the official like Catholic doctrine on the four uh what are the things, the books that the the four are the gospels. The gospels. The four gospels. The four gospels. They're all true. Even though they aren't they aren't all the gospels based on one of the gospels. No, uh, we're getting off topic, but <laughs> how is that? Off topic? <laughs> I'm not talking about the Gnostic getting, gospels. getting off topic, but uh, I, most okay. most biblical scholars today, contemporary biblical scholars, believe that <laughs> Luke and Matthew were written at least in based part on. based on Mark, whereas John is a, a an entirely separate tradition it's generally referred to as the johannine tradition wow i forgot what this analogy was for what chris would you say that mark is kind of like i ain't having that and matthew (laughs) is kind of like i got a man or is i got a man more like i think i think you want to think of mark as mc light in this analogy no the four (laughs) gospels are the four women that he tries to woo right and the Mm. one that he ends up with the holy spirit it's got to be john right because John, right, you know, John, John is what, just doing his we, own what, thing. It's like whatever. What the were fuck, you saying, yeah. John? Before we, I was, I, I was, I was making a small point, which, which is that <clears throat> the structure of the song is is basically positive K is set. Positive K says, "I want to get with right. you," and yeah, yeah, and girl, unnamed girl, says, "No, you're stupid." Or I got a man, right? So, 
Yeah, I think specifically what she says is that is, I got a man. <laughs> uh, he, all I'm saying is every advance that he makes gets rebuffed. Right. If I may make a sword fighting metaphor, yeah, every uh, every thrust that he makes gets parried. Well, yeah. that is an I apt right. metaphor. And I think that it's. Mm-hmm. I think that makes her the you know the victor just you know by by technicality. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So what were we? It, we were we discussing. were talking about the positive K single. I got a man. <laughs> well, the question was, what is meant by the term? I ain't trying to hear that. Scene. It's just like I, I, I don't want. I don't want to hear that. I want to. I want a different answer. Yeah. yeah. It's really. It's interesting though because even in that statement, there's the no, the acknowledgement that hearing is passive. I have heard that. Yeah. Obviously. I, it's more like I wish you wouldn't say yeah. that. It yeah, sounds like I, he's I agree. deceiving like, himself. Really. Yeah, saying like, like I, I, hey, I'm making no effort to communicate with you honestly and understand you. Yeah, you know, so he's basically saying, you know, I'm gonna leapfrog that point, yeah, that you've just made and talk about gonna like, what it's gonna point, be like see? when we're okay. I, I'm ready to move on to discussion question number four. If you guys are ready, yeah, sure, do it. In the music video for the song "I Got a Man" by Positive K. <laughs> Are the hilariously bad special effects <laughs> intended to be hilariously bad? Mm. Oh wow, that's that's a tough question. I, I assume that you're primarily thinking of the scene where he, where, where in, in response to the girl's um, rebuffs to his his advancements, he jumps backward into a picture on the wall behind him. <laughs> wall behind this is, that's the most egregious example. In this scene, they're like standing in front of a brick wall with a bunch of like various like hip hop posters and on stuff. On the street in broad daylight. Mm-hmm. On the street in broad daylight. Like they're not at the night party anymore. One of these posters, in, in place of this poster, has been superimposed a moving video of two bikini-clad hotties. And upon being rebuffed, Classic variety of hottie. Positive K makes a large leap vaguely towards the wall and then is very poorly seen, like, jumping into the the (laughs) scene taking place in the poster on the wall. It's very surreal. It's very surreal, Jeremy. You know, for a second I thought I was watching, like, a French surrealist film from the 30s. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Boone Allen. That's what I thought. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) my My interpretation of this video, and you can tell me if you agree... We start off at a, uh, a fashionable garden party. Yeah, and, right, um, yeah. Po- yes, I think that is an accurate description. Positive K and his associates are uh, they're hanging out on the mezzanine. And um, <laughs> just uh, clarification: when you describe it as a fashionable uh, garden party, when you are you using the word fashionable to mean place where people are wearing horrible clothes? <laughs> it was the eighties, yeah, or well, early nineties. Yeah. It was the early. It 90s. was the early nineties. So. Positive K and his associates are on the mezzanine, and they are overlooking the <clears throat> dance floor, and his first associate says, Yo, pause, look at them three joints right there, man. And then his, his second associate says something completely incomprehensible. Yeah, that is dumb. Tell me to get in with that fitting, go. I was so confused by that. I played that. <laughs> it's literally, it, it is incomprehensible. <laughs> I played that like ten times trying to understand what that line was. Yeah, that is dumb. Tell me to get in with that fitting, go. You know what the second guy's saying, though. He's saying, like, one of us should go hit on them. Who has, yeah. yeah. And then Positive it's, K it's says, clear yeah, the I'm, I'm going saying. to do just that, man. Yeah. Um, but it's then, like, by, so by these, golly, so, I believe that I will do I just think he that. says, by Jove. By the power of Castle Grayskull. We see mm. these three women at this party. And then when Positive K actually gets down to the three women and starts hitting on an individual mm-hmm. one... Then all of a sudden we enter a kind of a fantasy space. <laughs> Is it? Um, see, I interpreted it as just like you know, like several days later. You know, are you talking about the scene where he's having lunch with her? Well, and they're wearing different clothes. The first of the yeah, and Positive K's like wardrobe changes are also humorously, humorously done in substitution splice, where he'll like walk. He's walking from one woman to the next, and his clothes change like in several like mm-hmm. jump cuts. His clothes get really dapper right before he says the line about how dapper he is. That's yeah, just well, good planning. That's true. No, that's, that's you know I mean, what that is. That's text painting. <laughs> my interpretation, my interpretation of the music video is that as he's macking on each of these individual women, he's thinking like, 
what positive K do I need to be to impress this mm-hmm. woman? And he's like kind of putting, okay, this first one. So the first one, we've got the sassy, athletic girl next door type. And he's and then, jogging. Like, he changes into kind of like, kind of lighter street clothes and he's he meets her. And then like we see her, she's like jogging and he's macking on her there. That falls through and we move on to the sassy streetwise urbanite. He gets in kind of more like hip hip clothes. Um, and that, that's the one where he jumps into the picture behind him? That's where he jumps okay. into the picture. And from then, only from then do we move on to the sassy, upwardly mobile sophisticate um, where he's dressed as dapper and, and they talk. They basically talk about money. Yeah, and they're having, um, they're having lunch um, on a veranda, I believe. As we're discussing this... If we want to refer to these women, I think we could call them uh, sporty, scary, and right. posh, <laughs> just for just for uh, for convenience' sake. Jeremy, oh man! So wait, so baby is the one that he eventually if, lands um, in, right? Yeah, quite possibly. Maybe if you're Ginger. if you are you're positing total skank. <laughs> <laughs> You're positing that the interactions we see are all taking place in a fantasy space or in Positive K's imagination. It's interesting that he gets rebuffed in all three of these encounters then because it's I, like, mm. I mean, that makes him seem like a really pathetic character because he's there, he's there imagining himself hitting on these women and being rejected. Well, Chris, the power of imagination only extends so far. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that... The dialogue is imagined. I'm saying oh. that. I mean, we, technically it is because it's from a rap song. But, but yeah, technically <laughs> it is. But in the context it's, of it's, if we right. take, and, I and, think and it's, they're not even it's literally actor. just him talking to himself. Look, my interpretation, and I think there is good textual evidence for uh-huh. it, <laughs> is that we are to interpret the garden, the fashionable garden party, as reality, reality, mm. yeah. and. The other set pieces are intended to be more expressive and evocative of... But the audio is always reality. But the dialogue is yeah. real. He's he's imagining the clothes and the scenery and everything. He's like, if I were really going to really go for it and be rejected by this woman, the way to do it no, would he's be... Thinking like, he's, he's only thinking imagining like, his own clothes. Like, the, the women's... The women are actually wearing those clothes. The, the, the jogging woman the, wouldn't be party, wearing jogging clothes party. at a garden party. It's a fashionable garden party, John. At the fashionable garden party, they're all dressed like skanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think I think because I I think the one the one that he was having lunch with I think is wearing the exact same outfit back at the party. I, I guess we need to watch it again. We need to watch it again. So the part where he jumps into the wall—that's like a fantasy within a fantasy. I think so. Yeah, it's basically it's, it's your basically your classic inception. fantasy within a fantasy. It's really more of a daydream than a fantasy because he's still hearing the words that they're actually saying. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah, um, he, he's just occupying his his brain space. It seems like he I should. Think it's made, perhaps it's like, well, women a, are talking. I better imagine perhaps it's more of kind of a visualization visual. exercise that helps yeah. him to mac on women. Mm. I don't know. It, I mean, <laughs> it clearly doesn't help that much. Well, he Coming does straight from his Frank T J yeah. Mackey seminar. He does hook up with this uh, this last one uh, in yeah. the end. Fair enough. He does the 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 aforementioned baby. Though again, we don't spice. know what he says to that one. Does he whisper in her ear that it is audible, or is it? Does he? Um, I don't think we really see it. I think we is again. We'd camera? have to watch it again. I've wa- yeah. but I I don't really feel no. like watching it again. But th- there I'm is pretty sad. Yeah, I watched it like twice. And that seemed like it enough. It does seem like, and this might undercut the whole feminist Twice. point that we were making, but when he's ascending the staircase, yeah, uh, it, there is a shot where it looks back at the at the the three women that rejected yeah. him, yeah, and they clearly seem to be, you know, maybe not regretting their decisions decision, but. Let that one get away. Yeah. Well, none of them, I mean, none of them, none of them are like, hey, get away from me, creep. They're all like, okay, like, yeah. I'll be, you know, there's a little flirty exchange. And they're like, you seem like, he seems like a nice guy, but, but I've got a mm. man. Yeah. Like, ultimately, you know. So they're all like, you know, like, once, once our respective relationships go to hell, you know, like, you know. Where, where are there? Well, I think a lot where of. Where are there men? Why are there men not there at the garden party? Okay. This brings invited. us. This <laughs> brings us to discussion question five. Um, Great transition. 
in the song um, I Got a Man by Positive K, the the three women featured in the music video for this song claim to got a man, <laughs> but we never actually see any evidence of this. Yeah. Um, you know, all three attend this, this fashionable garden mm-hmm. party alone. One is jogging, uh, jogging alone. The, the uh, posh girl is uh, um, dining alone at a... Mm. Never do we see one of these men. So my question is, are these women fronting? Or perhaps that lends credence to the notion that the entire thing is uh, a scene of Positive K's imagination. That's true. Like, like maybe, the, maybe the end of the like the framing device at the end that you don't see because the video gets cut off. Like, maybe it pans out and it's like, did you ever see the, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, but I don't really remember it. it. It turns out that the narrator is actually in an insane asylum mm-hmm. at the very yeah. end. <laughs> so, wait, are you saying in actuality the fashionable <laughs> garden party is an insane asylum? That is a really I'm not, interesting interpretation not, uh, of that music video. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it is supported by the. Episode. I'm not saying that that's definitely what's going on. I'm just saying it's open to interpretation. As all great works of art. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think the answer to that question is not contained in the video. There's just that you don't have. Yeah reasonable evidence it's to draw a conclusion it, 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 it is they a both do and do cat. not got a man it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like by, Schrodinger's man what is, so it's, it's plausible Vaden? that they have yeah. a man but it's certainly you don't think it's implied that they're do no think, I, I just do don't think, think no, it's stated I, I one just way or the other you know like how, how many what children if? had the lady Macbeth we don't know yeah exactly what exactly. if they they do got a man, yeah, but maybe it's saying. all the same man. Oh, it's all the s- <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they're all dating the same man, and that's why they're like, they're kind of unsatisfied. What if the they're man like, they're... I'm kind of curious what life with Positive K What if K the man they're like? dating yeah. is <laughs> the reality Positive K, and they're being hit <laughs> on by fantasy oh, Positive K, and that's why they're a little confused and nonplussed. They're like, but I've got to... It's, you know... I got him in. It's, it's you, you. It's a real version of you. But the real I, version I of you is uptight and like kind of an asshole. Yeah, yeah mm. like Pee Wee Herman. It really it gives an interesting interpretation to the line, um, so when your man don't treat you like he used to, I kick yeah, in like a turbo booster. Yeah. yeah. You know, like we, we, it, it's like he's the crazy version because he's a turbo mm. booster. Mm. You know? Like, it's like the passion is gone from their relationship in the real world, you know? So it's like I'm, I, I've retreated into this fantasy where I, I, I'm perpetually at a garden party. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and crazy me is going to kick in like, like Nitro. Mm. None of it makes sense. Yeah, this video doesn't make sense at all. These, you know, we haven't really settled any of these discussion questions, but I think we've, we've just barely um, scratched the surface. Yeah, I think d- we have pretty much covered this. <laughs> but I'm going to open it up to anyone else. We've we've hit all my discussion questions. And, 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 I just wanted to mention a couple of lyrics. Jeremy, you obliquely referenced soup <laughs> <laughs> early on in this yeah, discussion. Yeah, that was subtle. <laughs> yes, yes. A- as a uh, a synonym for uh, mistruth, yeah, yes, or, or yes. falsehood. Uh, yes, the, the the specific line is, and this is from the the, the woman. Uh, she says, "Are you a chef? Because you keep feeding me soup." Mm-hmm. And I was very perplexed by this because I I have never heard that as a slang mm-hmm. term for. Okay. Yeah, I mean it. It seems new to me, but uh... this is a reference to "I'm not souped" by oh. the group Troop. In that song, a girl mentions at the beginning how all the guys are souped up on themselves, uh, i.e. in egotistical or into themselves too much. I don't like him anyway, because him and his group is conceited, and they're no. all souped up on themselves. I, what's, what's ac- what she's actually saying is, like, he says, I'm Big Daddy Longstrom, uh-huh. right. i.e. I have a big penis. She says, <laughs> you're feeding me soup, i.e. He should have, he should have no, just you said don't. that. You are just being boastful. So, yeah. Or, or whether or not he has a big penis, it's it's distasteful to brag about it. I think it's, it's, it's more. <laughs> well, the it's point. also like he may have it, a big penis. 
you know that's all very well and good so the other the other line the other line that i was that i was confused with and this this is by positive k uh he says i'm not a dog baby so don't play me like a clown (laughs) this makes no sense (laughs) how does the second epithet follow from the first well, right. let's look at it in context. Yeah, what's the full context, Jeremy? Well, let's see. She says she, she's got a man. He says that he he asks what his what her man has to do with him. She says, "I told you, I got a man." He says, "I'm not trying to hear that." Uh-huh. See, yeah, that that doesn't really help. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, you're just a dog. I'm gonna play you like a clown. That's not a. That's not an expression. I'm sorry. Yeah, n- neither of I those. I mean, we're so far removed from the early 90s that who can say? Uh, the early 90s are a foreign country. Uh, moving moving from that to one of the best lines of the song. <laughs> it, it, actually, this is, in fact, my candidate for the line of the song. Uh, <clears throat> I, better than I got a man? <laughs> yes, the, li- the line is as follows. <clears throat> you want lovin', you don't have to ask when. Your man's a headache. I'll be your aspirin. Mm, that is nice. That's yeah. clever. The headache in in this situation is that her current man is not constantly bothering her to have sex. You're, are you saying that you you think positive K is posing a straw man argument here <laughs> in implying that that her man? I think a his reasoning is very I'm weak. So glad you brought up that particular <laughs> logical fallacy. <laughs> In fact, her man is not a headache. <laughs> he's so he's going to cure the It's very premise of the argument is invalid. <laughs> <It's>, so <laughs> it is not a legitimate syllogism. <laughs> well, it's 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 it may be logical, but it's not sound. Okay, I think uh, I think we can move on. All right. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to... Segment four. 46 euphemisms for breasts, ranked from most to least appealing. Okay. <clears throat> this is my segment. Uh, I will be leading this segment. Uh, the way this segment works is uh, <laughs> I have prepared a list of 46 euphemisms for breasts, and I, and I have ordered that list uh, from most to least appealing. Um, <clears throat> I am going to read it uh, in order, uh, and there will be no discussion uh, until the end. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Number 46, cupcakes. (laughs) Number 45, pretty appealing. The Promised Land. (laughs) Number 44, boobs. I'm surprised that's no discussion, Jim. 43, balloons. 42 is Betty Boops. 41 is apples. 41 is apples. Number 40, melons. Number 39, tomatoes. It's a little bit of a fruit cluster. Number 38, mangoes. 37 is macaroons. 36 is bumpers. 35 is tatas. Number 34, fun bags. That's the least of them. 33, bonbons. 32, tips. 31, gazongas. Let me do that again. 31, Gazonga! Uh, 30. Whoppers. Whoa. 29. 
Cooter. 28. Earmuffs. What? 28. Earmuffs. No, no, I just go. Thank you. 27. Pop tarts. 26. Zeppelin. 25. Jugs. 24. Patty and Selma. 23. Milk Duds. 22. Mounds. 21. Flapjacks. Those are getting very unappealing. 20. Pillows. 19 is third base. It's not. Coming in at number 18, the Arch Deluxe. <laughs> number 17, Rack. 16, Knockers. 15, Honkers. 14, Dirigible. Number 13, Ski Slopes. Number 12, Can. 11, but. Knobs. 10, Tater Top. That's not a Number 9, Baloney Bags. That's, no, you're making up disgusting euphemism. I'm, I'm not. I'm I got the, no, no discussion. <laughs> Number eight. Bazooka. <laughs> Number seven. Mosquito bites. Yes. It's all downhill from here, folks. Number six. Chest anchors. And number five is Bra Stuffers. I kind of like that one. Number four, Chesticles. And number three, Skin Sacks. Number three is Skin There's no need to repeat that. I'm sorry, what was that? Number three, Skin Sacks. And number two, Flesh Bowl. And the number one least appealing of this list of 46 euphemisms for breasts is Sweater Puppies. (laughs) That is all. There are numerous things wrong with that segment. I have to formally protest the use of the term euphemism. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. To to describe these terms, which many of which seem to be whatever the opposite of a euphemism is, where like you're trying to, trying to make something sound more gross. That's yeah. legit. Like and there's nothing like yeah. gross really about boobs. Was well, so so a, a a a pure euphemism would be more like like mammary organs, bosom, or bosom. Yeah. bosom, or chest, yeah. chest region, chest or region. That would be more of a euphemism. Yeah, you know? chesticles. <laughs> now, chesticles is not a euphemism. <laughs> yeah, that is just a, a crass slang term. I'm gonna stop recording. By the okay, way, okay, I'll stop recording. Good night, everybody. Are we gonna jam it? We gonna Good night, everybody. You can listen. You can follow Bear Friend Tea Party on just iTunes. Just put one of the jams from us. the beginning. Well, look, tonight on look Bear Friend on Tea Twitch. Party, we just, about just, about put, uh, uh, just go to Bear Friend Party. What is the point of telling people what we talk about? Why would you? Why would you do that? There is no. There is nothing to be gained. There is no point in telling people what we've talked about. 
I don't understand, do, and, that's and I did have why. You life thought, is you know, why would Christmas that is, is a time? Uh, why would you tell people what we just talked about? Time?